Hey guys, it's TF Nut. Welcome back to the channel. And today we're going to be taking a quick look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Asriel Batman from Batman Curse of the White Knight. Very happy to finally be reviewing a DC figure for the channel. I really do like DC. I like both Marvel DC and a lot of other properties that I collect. I just haven't had a DC figure in a while just because, I mean, that's <laughs> really gone through the ringer with certain uh, companies and licenses and all that. But McFarlane Toys is one of the newer ones to tackle the license. And from what I've seen so far this year, I don't own all of them. Just this guy here and the Hellbat figure, but those are awesome figures. And from other figures I've seen this year from them, they've proven to do a really great job. So hopefully they can keep it up. The scale issue is a bit of a problem, but that's really not their fault. It's apparently Warner Brothers. They wanted 7-inch scale, so... Uh, I, I see Warner Brothers, uh, Brothers kind of being petty with Marvel Legends, which I don't really think that's true. I, I guess they just really wanted 7-inch. Anyway, we do have the packaging here, which I want to show off really quick. And this is going to be a quick review just because, or I'll try to be, make this quick, just because this guy has been reviewed a lot. You can see the card and the stand in the background. It did say 12+, plus, but Crowland Toys on top as well as 22 moving parts. And you see DC Multiverse Asriel. On this side, it just says Asriel from Batman Curse of the White Knight. We do have a DC Multiverse logo there. And it just says McFarlane Toys on the bottom. It also says DC Multiverse right there as well as Asriel. I bought this from an FYE and I think they were closing that uh, location. So I got this for the like $18 instead of the $24.99 that's listed on there. This is basically what the card is right there. All the other figures that are in the liner what have been made so far and then if you need the barcode still which this has become a little bit easier to find then i do recommend checking that out so yeah again talking about this figure it's awesome it is so freaking cool seriously there's some problems with it though let's talk about his accessory first which is a little hard to get out of his hand this is cool ass sword this is just really well done of course, the fire effect is removable. is a translucent orange, as you can see here. Um, this side here, you can see where it's open right there. We're sliding it in so that whenever I want to pose this uh, around, I like to make sure that this, I mean, you could show it like this, but it's not going to, to me, not going to look as cool. You're seeing a little too much of the sword. So why is it really having a problem? Focus, all focusing. I like to keep it like this because it's not going to show let you know it's going to show more of the flame basically it's not going to show this opening the sword itself is a bit of a brittle plastic so just be careful when you're messing around with this and this is just really cool nice gold with a little bit of maroon or brown really for the handle nice silver on the paint or paint uh silver of course on the blade if i could speak english <laughs> this is just really awesome there's also, as you can see there, some nice sculpting going on. That is really well done. Lots of nice attention to the detail. So, talking about the actual detail of the figure, man, this thing looks so good. Just look at this thing. Let's do a quick 360, just so you get an idea of how this looks. So, lots of great parts going on here. There's a lot of detail in some areas and not, not a lot in certain areas as well but that's really kind of accurate to what we have with the character here at least based on the design that they're going with this head sculpt looks great i really dig that and the hood came out nice the or the gold i want to say on the, on the head is actually really clean it's soft plastic here this little hood piece goes back now, whatever these here are on his back, I don't know what these are uh, supposed to be called, but the, this it turned out great. These are soft plastic pieces. I thought these were, they're basically rubber at this point. I thought they were going to be like Marvel Legends capes that are just plastic and end up being bulky, but these are very light, very malleable. They're not bendy wires, of course, but they're just really easy to work with. They flow really well. These stick up pretty well, too. This is a little bit of a softer plastic, but these are glued in. So just be careful you don't break that on accident. Again, look at this, the details and sculpting on the face. There's actually some indents of the sculpting going on in the face. Those eyes came through really awesome. Uh, is this a fleur-de-lis, I believe? Yeah, just double checking. 
Um, that came out really clean, really nice black wash, and a lot of the line work throughout the figure really, really looking nice. Uh, I want to say they have a little bit of a wash going on the gold here. I could be wrong, but there is definitely some details with the paint going on here. And the red came out really clean. It's almost like metallic. Nice. It's just really, whatever colors we do have, like dark red, bright red, they really are clean, especially like the gold around the, the face here. We do get this fake knife that's sculpted in here, which is a little annoying. You have this uh, chain, this little cross of the chain around his waist that's also sculpted. So when I'm talking about some of the plain details, it's mostly like the bright red just because of how the design is. It's kind of basic. You do still get musculature, but it's, um, I mean, again, I'm not going to hate on it because that's the design. It came out really nice, but to me, in comparison, this is, of course, the better parts than around here, but it still looks nice. These gauntlets are cool. I really like them. They came out really nice with that gold. It just is very clean. Now, one thing I do have on my particular figure is a splotch. So that's not great, unfortunately. Uh, I could maybe try to remove that on my own, but I'll, I'd have to be careful about that. Also, one complaint I have is these hands are a little loose for his sword when you're doing one-handed poses and two-handed poses because the arm articulation is hindered isn't the greatest. And you also get something similar on this side. Lots of nice rivets going on here. I don't know if I showed off the back yet. I think I did with these, but not the actual back. Again, black wash going on here. Really nice looking. They even have some attention to detail that they've wrapped around the, uh, the chain on the belt there. And this little flowing piece has some gold towards the bottom with, an, uh, again, a good black wash. Very good looking. These shoes also look really great, too. I dig that. Um, they're kind of like, is, is this supposed to be just maroon or something or brown? I think it's just supposed to be a very dark red, whereas this is supposed to be just a very bright red. The knees don't really look consistent with the rest of the uh the leg here this looks a little bit darker than this but uh you really gotta look at that closely like in person it really isn't that bad again really nice wrinkles on the shoes there they do look really good that's what the bottom of the feet look like so yeah i will tr i'll try to do a uh, two-handed pose later but i want to talk about articulation because this thing is surprisingly good it almost has like face articulation or something that neck is not moving so they've had like a ball joint in here. So that way it can look up on its own. Like look how far up this, I mean, yeah, that the hood's getting in the way, but just the potential of all that, the, if you want to move down, then we get an actual separate piece at the neck that will allow you to move down. So that's just crazy. This head articulation is some of my favorite head articulation I've ever had on a figure, which is kind of weird to say, but that is just so cool. You even get a swivel at the face. So it's again, like face articulation, I don't know what other toy companies have done that. Uh, if McFarlane is the first, that's almost revolutionary, seriously. We do have um, a little bit of a butterfly joint that gets hindered just because this guy is so bulky. Uh, arm swivel on the, all the way around. The in and out is actually really good. We do have an upper arm swivel. Might be, mine uh, might look like it's coming off a little bit, like the joint's about to pop out. So that's a little uh, concerning, but we do have a 90 degree bend at the elbow there. You can see these ratchets for when you're bending it. Now we do have that McFarlane wrist articulation that's also an SH figure arts where it swivels at the forearm. It also swivels at the wrist and will hinge. You can go in and out. Or, I don't know if I've done it with this, you could basically also manipulate it to go up and down. It's a little difficult to do. You gotta work with it. Ball joint and waist that can only really rotate like this. Fore and back isn't. Forward's fine, but back isn't really that great. You do have a separate waist sw swivel. So we have. This one that goes up to the chest, and then this one here that actually swivels, and that actually allows for a lot of really good rotation right there. Legs could go forward, back actually really well. Um, now, a lot of people complain about upper thigh swivels on McFarlane figures not being existent, which I kind of agree. They are there, but they just are very blocked by the sculpting. This one actually has a little bit of a good rotation, and you could honestly maybe chip away or you know take a dremel start sanding down maybe some of the butt or the thigh here so you could get a better rotation out of that so as it is it's not the greatest it's not a full 360 like marvel legends but it still functions at least going inward so um you might want to mod that we do have double jointed knees 
which I really don't want to bend all the way right now, but it does get a really full bend. We do also have a rotation here at the foot, as you can see, and it will hinge forward and it does actually have an ankle rocker in the shoe, even though it is blocked. You can see that it's blocking the ankle here. It still gets that range of motion, so that's really good. And we do get toe articulation. So to end this review, I'm going to do some quick size comparisons and some quick images at the end. So you can see some Batman figures here on the right. That is the McFarlane Toys Hellbat suit Batman. It's a pretty tall figure, so it does stack up a little bit higher than Azrael here. Uh, and then when we have the Mezco uh, Sovereign Knight Batman on the left there, it could work in scale, but this Azrael's a little taller. And I think he's supposed to be the same height, maybe a little bit taller than Batman. I don't remember, but so this may not work out too well. Here's a regular size Marvel Legends figure on the left. That is the retro Spider-Man. So that's definitely going to be a little too short to be compared with this guy. And then we have a regular size NECA figure like the Casey Jones uh, right here. And uh, they're about the same height. Uh, McFarlane Toys figures may be a little bit shorter, at least the normal size characters, a little bit shorter than NECA figures, but they will generally fit in this uh, same scale. So yeah, if you don't have this figure yet and you really need some good DC figures, honestly, I think McFarlane Toys, from what I've seen, has been doing a really good job this year. Uh, this figure, to me, is just... It's up there with one of my favorite figures of the year, seriously. It is extremely well done. Yes, it, there could be things better about it, but what's here is really good when it comes to the sculpting detail. Articulation is pretty good. Uh, I mean, a little bit of a lack of accessories, but I mean, he doesn't really use much, so I can't really complain there. And for 20 bucks, like this usually is, 20 to 25 bucks, and I got this for 18 bucks. It's, a, it's awesome. Definitely try to pick it up if you can. It's starting to get a little bit easier to find. Sometimes I can find this at a Walmart or, you know, maybe check on Amazon or GameStop and all that. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comment down below what you think about the figure, what you think about the review. Leave a like, share, mix your friends, and I'll see you guys later.